and the shit arcade conversions continue mate. Probably the worst David Whittaker tune I've ever heard. Thanks to uh, Tenjin who changed uh, their name from Domark because they had such a shit reputation. Please excuse me, you need to warm up a bit. Bloody cold. Everything's stacked up in front of the radiators in this room. It's not good. Allegedly, it's 18 degrees in here. Doesn't fucking feel like it, mate. So, I'm going to be playing AB, APB, All Points Bulletin on a C64 and, uh, and then maybe if you're good I'll play Miami Chase because I think they're sort of similar games uh, but uh, I don't have any memories of this game I have to say I'm sure I've watched uh, videos of the C64 version. I don't think I've ever played it. However, I have a very, very vague memory of playing it on the Amiga and not being impressed. But. Um, before we play this game, let's let's recap. This is a, a scroll, eight-way scrolling uh, game, and that's really uh, the bread and butter of a C64 game. You can do nice 16-color eight-way scrolling games on the C64. Not in basic, no, I admit that. But this is the time of machine code, full price, ten-pound C64 games on cassette. Another 30 seconds worth of roll up to go, and quite a lot of warm tea must be ingested. Well, it's actually coffee today, I couldn't be bothered to make the tea. So, I can talk about the title page, I suppose. Well, there's no graphics there, there's, there's no arcade attract mode replicated. Converted uh, by some group called Walking Circles. <coughs> Coffee is dry as fuck. I think I've had this conversation before. The coffee tastes great. Blue Kenko, for anyone who's interested. I was actually born in a country that's famous for coffee. Thank you. And you're probably thinking, I didn't know you was Italian, mad Commodore. Well, no, that's not where the best coffee comes from. One country invented uh, coffee, or a group of countries. It's very hard to tell. I, I don't know the history of that area of the world. Not going back, uh, you know, three millennium. Uh, another country come along and uh, invented something that meant when you did make the coffee, real coffee, uh, which is sort of like espresso, um, you didn't have all the coffee grounds in your cup. And then the Italian comes along and added all the load of faff and bullshit and and uh, all that bollocks. But it's not actually any better than the, the second group of people who took the uh, ground coffee beans and they invented this particular device so you could uh, make the coffee powder and the water. Anyway, I don't fucking know. 
Joystick port 2, this is going to be a bit iffy, the joystick wires are all tangled up with this one. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, the uh, presentation continues to uh, underwhelm. Aim at them and press siren one time to rest. Why am I resting code? Why well, is there a problem straight away? Because <coughs> having vertical status bars uh, should prevent you uh, having uh, hardware scrolling. So it's not a character scroll. I'm actually stunned, it didn't play as bad as I thought. I've got no idea what I'm supposed to be doing, but anyway. Let's see how we did that. A bit like a 70s uh, game show. Those graphics are terrible. They're like 1983 quality. Litter bug. Aim them. Aim at them, I should say. And press siren one time to arrest. Why couldn't you load all that in one go? So the scrolling is a bit laggy. What happened there? Game, or why is it game over? So we only have to get two cones, I believe. I have to go all the way round anyway. What they fucking uh, hang on? They they reset the codes every time you uh, drive past them. Why is it game over? Is it because I'm crashing into things? Right, so if, if your uh, shitty police car hits the cone, it's fucking written off straight away, is it? I know, I know this is an 80s American police car, but they're not that bad, are they? So what, you have to avoid the cone? I didn't... So how come it's not game over when I run someone over? The hand thing is a bit weird. I, I'm not sure what's going on with the hand thing, I have to say. And you've got like one speed that you go at. So these are, uh, these are not fast loaders on the disk drive. They can't be because they're working with the SD to IEC. Um, so the loading times actually ain't that bad. But then the graphics are the fucking same on every level. Isn't it? So I, is there like damage or something? That a little bug, I don't know who the little bugs are.
It's going to say game over now, and I've got no fucking idea why it is. It's a miserable fucking game. It's probably a shit arcade game that's been done really shit on the C64. That's a lot of shit for like one subject. The music's shit, the presentation is shit. Uh, some idiot decide, decided to do a vertical fucking uh, status panel preventing the use of the hardware scrolling of the C64. Why would you buy this game anyway? So it's a very shit conversion of a probably very average uh, coin on. And when, when did this come out? Just, ah, yeah, 1989. 1989? Ah, 1989. If it come out in the arcade in 1989, well, Shadow of the Beast for the Amiga 1000 came out in 1989. You don't need an Amiga 500 to run that. As long as you've got 512k of RAM, it works fine on any Amiga ever sold. Kickstart problems uh, notwithstanding. I can't really describe to you. It's just like... It's the negative version of the vanilla milkshake effect. It is terrible, but because I was never forced to play this, Luckily, I wasn't forced to uh, put up with the horrible games library of 1989 on any home computer. Things have gone down the toilet by 1989. And that's probably because since about 1983-84, people were distributing crap copies of just about every game, good or bad. So software houses who already were quite tempted to do shit quality conversions anyway, uh, they realised it was just better to farm out a project to some idiot who didn't know what the fuck he was doing for the cheapest price uh, and make money that way. The, the less money they put into the project, the less money they lose from all the uh, pirating game. And like I've always said, the Amiga was born into that sort of mindset, because Amiga uh, games in the UK started coming out around 88 regularly in the UK. There may be some from 87, like, you know, Mirasoft's import of Defender of the Crown and things like that. But, um, no. Sadly, the Amiga was born into that situation where the software houses are saying, well, whatever we do is going to get pirated. So, you know, the Amiga games carried on the tradition of getting work. Uh, let's try Miami Chase. 